The Rebel Capitalist Show. Uh, Just as kind of a a learning thought experiment, I mean, you've known some incredible investors uh, in in your life, and you've known the the top guys and gals in the business. Uh, What would you say the the top three attributes that make up a a good investor that, uh, you know, us amateurs looking on could, could learn from? Is it, is it risk management? You know, that's what I see all the time. Or is there something more to it? What, what's your insight there? Oh, I don't know that I have the answer. I, w- I would become a great investor myself if I did. I, <laughs> my main thing is the ability to stand against the, the crowd um, yeah. or the ability to look at what's happening and say, wait a minute, that's not the right thing. That's not, the what, that's not reality. You know, if everybody's saying the sky is blue, these guys go over and look out the window to see if the sky is blue. And then often they say, the sky is not blue. And then they act when everybody's shrieking and on the TV and on the internet, everybody's saying the sky is blue, the sky is blue. Some guy is smart enough to go look out the window. It's amazing to me how many people, if the government says the sky is blue, will not even look out the window, mm. not even ask. Mm. I will tell you, as recently in, in Singapore, there was a guy, a charlatan, a crook, who was telling the whole world that he had a huge business with Rio Tinto, the gigantic m- m- mining company, and that he was selling lead to them, huge amounts. And he raised hundreds of millions of US dollars because of he had this very lucrative business of buying and selling to Rio. Nobody even called up Rio Tinto to say, who is this guy? You know this guy? Are you doing hundreds of millions of them? All they had to do was make one phone call and they would have found that the whole thing was a fraud. I mean, he's in jail now, mm. as he should be. But what is the shock to me? It's like I say, I mean, it, I'm not the first to know. Many people have learned that if the government says something enough times, Everybody believes it. And back to the answer to your question is, it's the people who have enough sense or curiosity or whatever to go against the crowd or to see, to understand that the crowd cannot be right and that we should do something else. Yeah, uh, everyone likes I to mean, call that's... them. I've noticed everyone likes to call themselves a contrarian investor until an opportunity comes up where it's very, very difficult to pull the trigger. And then all of a sudden they're, they're saying, oh, well, I'm gonna hold off on this one. You know, it reminds me of uh, when COVID really hit the markets in March of 2020. And I mean, people thought the world was ending and the contrarian play back then was to step in and, and buy. And uh, you know, that was the right thing to do, but very, very few people did. All the people that call themselves contrarian investors, they were still sitting on the sidelines. So it's one thing to say it, it's a whole different thing to do it. Yeah, well, you ask who, what about successful investors? Those are the ones who do it, who figure it out and do it. And back to the beginning of this conversation, I would like to be investing in Russia right now. Cannot, cannot. And maybe, maybe I'm lucky that I cannot invest in Russia. But uh, these opportunities come up periodically, and everybody is terrified. And the government tells you, blah, blah, blah. Please do not get your investment advice from the government, any government, (laughs) certainly not the US government. You're gonna go broke if you rely on governments for your investment advice. Look out the window and make up your own minds. Yeah, that's right, that's right, and be patient. Yeah, that's one thing, we'll we'll end on that. One of your quotes from Jack Schwager, he was asking you what your investment strategy was. And you said you just wait till there's a big pile of money sitting in the corner and then you just go pick it up. And yeah, uh, he I just mean, he kept pushing you and he said, well, Jim, what if you have a view that the market's going to go up? You know, don't you, you try to play that view? And I think you told him specifically that that's the quick way to the poorhouse. <laughs> it is. <laughs> but I mean, it, it, it's amazing to me. That if you now, if you're a trader, you cannot do it. I mean, I Roy Newberger had some great traders in, in the world. Roy Newberger's dead now, but you know, these guys couldn't wait five minutes before they bought and sold, bought and sold, <laughs> yeah. bought and sold. That's not my style. Yeah. My style, 
I have learned is to wait until literally, oh, look at all that money over there. Yeah. I just have to go over there and get it. Yeah. But you have to wait for those things to happen. And then, and George, as you know, then you, after you act, after you do something, you wait for it to play out. You don't go jumping in and out all day, every day. You wait. If you buy something that you know is going to work, you wait, you wait, you wait, you wait. And you, if you're right, it's going to go up for years. At least that's my style. Find something that will go up for years. There'll be ups, there'll be downs, there'll be panics, you'll be scared at times. But if you can just do nothing for a long time, you know, I'm lazy. I like investing like this. I like just <laughs> waiting till I find something and then I don't have to do anything. Yeah. I wait until some other change comes along. What, what's incredibly ironic is the amount of discipline required to pick up that money once you see it sitting in the corner. Uh, it's not that easy. Oh, well, yes. But you've been <laughs> waiting, and if you've been observing and doing your homework, doing your research, you will realize, ah, that's it. Yeah. You know, everybody watching this knows a lot about something, whether it's cars or fashion or something. They, they should be successful investors because they just should wait until they see something that's changing dramatically in cars or fashion mm -hmm. then they can do research and act yeah uh, but, but but george it's amazing how many people you can have this conversation with and they say you're not you, i mean you're right you're right i'm going to do that now but then they say just give me one hot tip though yeah, <laughs> just one hot tip. <laughs> Everybody wants a hot tip. Everybody wants to be rich this week, including me. Yeah, right. You know, right. but hot tips will send you to the poor house. That's right. That's right. Uh, well, maybe we'll we'll wait to give him that hot tip until our next interview. We'll we'll, we'll keep him hanging there. We'll give him a cliffhanger. <laughs> well, I look forward to the next time. I repeat that I'm envious that there you are in Medellin. It's such a great city, and I. I'm not current, but it must be great opportunities now. I know the property was such a staggering opportunity uh, back then. And you say it still is going up. Well, it should be. It's just amazing. And some of those places with the, the restaurant district and the bar yep. district. That's right, oh, right now. Gosh. Yeah, that's right. It right was now. just dazzling. It was so alive and dynamic and vibrant. It was amazing. And, you know, many people in the world will tell you that the Colombian women and the Venezuelan women are the most beautiful. Uh, I don't know if they're the most beautiful, but there were certainly plenty of nice looking women. <laughs> last time I was there. And that hasn't the changed, Venezuelans, Jim. That hasn't changed. <laughs> well, good for you. And the Venezuelans for a while were the home of a beauty contest. They were winning beauty contests. I mean, Venezuela is a disaster right now. Yeah. Venezuela well. had some gorgeous women and, and the one beauty contest all over the world. And the Colombians said they did too. And yeah. they did. Um, yeah, the, the, those the are music, very, very salsa, the weather, the people, uh, the, the food, it's uh, the, the cost of living is just uh, unbelievably low. And it's a three hour flight from Miami. Uh, there's, there's a lot to like. Can I tell you again, I'm envious of you. <laughs> you know, you, you uh, should change the name of your program to Rebel Columbia or something, yeah, Colombian yeah, Rebels or yeah, something. Yeah, Insider, uh, Medellin Insider. Well, <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I, it's, uh, it's a really a remark, remarkable place. And after 50 years of civil war, somebody should have an opportunity. I'm delighted at you. I'm yeah. very impressed. Very, very impressed. Well, I'll let well you know. Done. I'll let you know how it goes, and uh, and next time we'll talk about Turkey as well. Uh, it's another thing that's on our watch list, so uh, we'll leave that as a cliffhanger for the audience. So, Jim, I appreciate your time, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I wish I were there. Thank you. <laughs>